A few weeks ago, Kaysen posted a video on the channel talking about the problem with indie horror games recently, and why most of the new releases feel like identical copies with no creativity. He talked deeply about the mistakes that developers make while creating their games, and why hundreds of projects each year pass by unnoticed and don't achieve any sales. This point is reasonable to be honest, and it made me think about why certain indie games shine and succeed, and why others don't. Specifically, what are the elements that contribute to producing a special indie horror experience, that can catch people's eyes and push them to open their wallets? This idea inspired me to create this video, where I want to showcase several indie horror games that came out over the last 10 years, and succeeded in forcing us to pay attention to them. Indie games that did something different that made them stand out from the crowd, and raise the standards for indie horror in general. I also want to use them as examples that I believe indie developers should look up to and try to understand what they can learn from each one of them. I tried to keep the list as diverse as possible because I want every game to be unique, and I also want to avoid experiences that look identical. So without further ado, let's start. This is a game that I never had the chance to talk about on the channel before. Even though, for many people, it's basically one of the experiences that define their love for the indie genre, just like Amnesia did. This is a creepy survival horror game that will keep you on the edge of your seat. And if you love Amnesia games, then you'll definitely love this one. In this game, you find yourself stranded on a derelict cargo ship with no memory of how you got there. However, the ship is haunted by a monstrous entity, but the catch is that the environment and the entity here are procedurally generated, and they keep changing all the time as you search for an escape. Your mission is mainly to survive, find resources, and ultimately escape the ship, and there's no overarching narrative beyond that. But you can also find items here and there that hint at the ship's dark past. Just like Amnesia, Monstrum emphasizes stealth and evasion, You'll need to scavenge for items like flares, lockpicks, and tools to help you navigate the procedurally generated ship, because your only option is to outrun or outsmart the monster. The environment plays a big role here, because you can use certain parts for sneaking around, climb ladders to reach different areas, and hide in lockers to avoid detection. Trust me, this game is a piece of art for those who love a stealth challenge, where survival requires you to use your brain instead of muscles. The constant threat of the monster lurking around every corner always keeps you on high alert, and every playthrough is unique, making your experience different from others. So I really consider this indie game to be one of the gems that didn't receive the deserved appreciation like its peers had. My name is Simon. I'm just an average guy. Nothing special about me. Like, someone you don't notice. Someone nobody cares about. Someone left outside. More often than not, I'm alone. And anxiety and depression controls my life every day. In my opinion, if Silent Hill had a baby in the indie gaming field, it would be Cry of Fear, without a shadow of a doubt. This is a psychological horror game that will mess with your mind to the core, and when I say psychological, I mean it. Here you play Simon, a young man stuck in a deserted Scandinavian city called Feversholm. But the problem is that the place is shrouded in darkness and filled with horrific creatures and nightmarish illusions. As you explore the city and its buildings, 
The line between reality and Simon's delusions blurs, and you'll slowly start to unravel the mystery behind this weird location and Simon's past. You'll meet multiple characters, including a girl that Simon has a crush on, but she doesn't share the same feelings towards him. You'll also meet a suspicious doctor who might look friendly at first, but he's actually extremely evil. When it comes to the monsters, you'll need to manage your resources like ammo and health carefully to survive, as they are scarce. But what makes the psychological part very powerful here is the fact that Simon is very depressed and suffers from intense mental problems. These mental issues have a big influence on the events of the story. And when you reach the end, you'll discover a plot twist that will make you understand how freaking disturbing this game is, but in a good way. It's one of the few games where the plot is scarier than any monster you can face, because after all the mess you'll go through, you'll find out that you haven't really paid attention. I genuinely believe that a remake of this game with updated visuals and mechanics would seriously result in a perfect modern Silent Hill game. The sad news is that this is very hard considering that the team behind it is a tiny studio with no big budget and they were even generous enough to make this game free to play. I don't know if we'll ever see a revival for this title, but so far, it remains one of the most memorable psychological experiences I have ever gone through in indie gaming. If you ask me to recommend the scariest short horror game for you, then I really don't believe any choice other than Wrong Floor would make any sense. The fact that the story is a mystery and you don't even know what you're doing here makes it even more terrifying. You enter an elevator expecting a normal ride, but things take a turn for the worse when the elevator malfunctions and plunges you into a blocked path. You end up on the wrong floor a creepy and unsettling place far from where you intended to go. And at first sight, it seems like a floor that you wouldn't want to stay on for more than two seconds. Your goal here is simple. Escape this spooky floor and find your way back up. But the problem is that the environment here is so freaking dark that you can barely see anything. You need to use a lamp on the floor to see where you need to go until you finally find a flashlight that will not help you a lot. However, your heart will skip a few beats when you realize that you're not alone here and there's a disturbing tall maniac with you that keeps following you everywhere without confronting you directly. I swear the atmosphere in this experience is an absolute hell and you can only understand this when you play the game yourself. The dark climate keeps you on high alert every second, and no matter where you go, you'll always feel that someone is following you or looking at you. Once you find the items you need to repair the elevator and leave, you'll feel a deep relief, as if you're the one stuck in real life. So if you're looking for a free short indie game that can help you lose a couple of years from your lifespan and give you some grey hairs, then this is what you're looking for, my friend. Inside is a beautiful and unique indie horror game in every sense of the word, and I'm still to this day waiting for the next project of its developer. 
It is a chilling masterpiece known for its dark, disturbing atmosphere and mystical narrative that always leaves you with more questions than answers. The protagonist here is a boy in a dystopian world, and you can gradually understand the story through environmental clues and disturbing imagery, leaving a lot to interpretation. You'll find yourself hunted by shadowy figures and navigating through strange, often brutal scenarios that make no sense at first. But believe me, there's a bigger backstory than you think here. You can also expect a rich gameplay experience where you'll need to use your platforming skills, avoid deadly traps, and sometimes even control minds to overcome obstacles. Yes, you heard me right. At some point you'll be able to control people's minds to progress, but don't let that convince you that you're powerful. Everything about this place is chilling, and you will always feel vulnerable because you simply can't understand why it's bizarre and why everyone wants a piece of you. The stark, monochromatic art style with splashes of red creates a hauntingly beautiful and unsettling world that succeeds in keeping you uncomfortable, especially with the intense music and sound effects. The way this game is deep and profound resulted in a huge success after people bought it like crazy to understand it and 99% of them were happy to the core with the quality of the experience. The game's page on Steam is almost going to explode from the amount of positivity that players throw at it. Exit 8 is a game that came out a few months ago, and it took the internet by storm and sold so many copies despite its simple concept and gameplay. In this game, you're stuck in a seemingly endless underground passageway with a creepy vibe, and your goal is to find Exit 8 in order to leave this endless loop. However, in order to do so, you need to observe your surroundings and find anomalies. And this is what makes it interesting. It's all about observation. If you see something off, like a misplaced sign or a change in the environment, you need to turn back immediately and look at this anomaly. It's basically a test for your memory and attention to detail, which pushes you to be excited to finish this mission and keep trying if you fail. This is the secret that the developer used in order to make people buy this game like crazy. The key word here is simply challenge. And believe me when I tell you that gamers love this word so much and always enjoy testing their skills and competing with others. That's why you can find many videos online of people finishing this game as fast as they can to prove that they're the best at it. This is something that new indie developers should pay attention to if they want to make a successful game. You always need to tease players and force them to buy your game because it has something special or creative that can either entertain them, scare them, or challenge them, no matter how simple it is. This is why I consider Exit 8 a successful example of indie gaming and how an intelligent idea can sometimes beat fancy elements like action and jump scares. You definitely heard of the saying, never judge a book by its cover before, and if you understand it, then you'll most likely realize that Darkwood is a game that deserves a deeper look before you can judge it. 
At first sight, many people would think that this is a bizarre game with a funny camera angle and that it's not worth it. But once you actually try it, you realize that it's an incredible journey that combines creepiness, survival, and exploration in one experience. The story of Darkwood is shrouded in mystery, with an emphasis on player interpretation and piecing things together through exploration and environmental storytelling. The game is set in the late 1980s, somewhere in a fictionalized version of Poland with a Soviet bloc influence. However, you will also find yourself in a vast corrupted forest called Darkwood, which traps and mutates those who dare to enter. You play as a stranger who awakens deep within the forest with no memories, and eventually you discover that the forest is infected by a strange plague that transforms flora and fauna into monstrous beings. As you go deeper, you encounter other survivors, but be careful. Some of them are hostile, and some are offering clues or aid. But regardless of the story itself, there's something strange that makes the environment scary, even when you don't see any physical threat. The atmosphere is literally oppressive all the time, and there's always something disturbing that can show up from nowhere. This includes a spooky bride that you encounter at something called the wedding event. There are multiple brides that you need to face, and all of them dance back and forth, and sometimes they even ask for someone to dance with them. It's like they're real brides who died in a tragic way, and their ghosts are haunting the place and anyone who visits it. Long story short, this game is a masterpiece in its own way, and if you're looking for horror, survival, hallucinations, paranoia, and a deep distressing story, then Darkwood is an indie game that was made to serve you. When it comes to two d indie horror games that can really scare you and stress you out with some tense, spooky atmosphere, I feel like I can't think of another game more powerful than Detention. Set in the 1960s in Taiwan under martial law, Detention tells the story of two students, Wei Chun and Yu Len, who find themselves stuck in their haunted high school after curfew. What makes things creepy here is the fact that the game explores realistic themes of political repression, social unease, and supernatural horror inspired by Taiwanese folklore and mythology. The horror here can be felt primarily while you're discovering the dark secrets of the school and the character's past. And by the way, what makes it even more disturbing is that the story here is based on true events. Or at least, that's what's been said. <laughs> The gameplay is mainly about environmental storytelling and exploration, and you'll go through the stories of both Wei Chun and Fang Rei Xin, using their unique abilities to solve puzzles and progress. However, the atmosphere here is key, which means that the haunting visuals and distressing soundscapes are the ones designed to build the most dread. You'll witness stuff that seems like it makes no sense, but it's actually related to the deep history of this uncanny place. Detention achieved huge success, 
to the extent that it became a multi-platform game that PS4 and Switch owners had the chance to play alongside PC gamers. So there's no question that this is one of the most outlandish 2D indie horror games that has managed to stand out. Trust me boys and girls, this is a hidden horror gem in every way, and I feel that people are not paying much attention to it. Song of Horror is an indie survival horror game that stands out for its unique features, interesting story, and creative visual design. The narrative here revolves around the disappearance of a famous writer named Sebastian Husher and his entire family. His employee then sends an assistant to investigate what's going on, only for the assistant to vanish too. But he knows what it wants. From this point, you'll have the chance to play as one of 13 different characters, each related to the Husher case in some way. Yes, you heard me exactly right. There are 13 playable characters here across several different episodes which means that you'll experience multiple perspectives and new environments as you progress. Your exploration of the haunted locations will help you uncover clues and piece together the mystery behind the disappearances and the existence of a terrifying entity known as the Presence. But be aware, unlike most games, the presence is not an enemy that you can defeat or fight. It's some sort of spirit that reacts and adapts to your actions and decisions throughout the game. This seriously creates a unique experience where nothing is predictable and anything can happen anywhere all the time. And I don't remember waking up. The game focuses a lot on the atmospheric exploration of unsettling locations like a haunted antique shop, a forgotten abbey, and an abandoned mental hospital. There are also many insane puzzles that you need to solve, and resources that you need to gather, but for me, the camera angle remains one of my favorite aspects of this game, because it pushes you to stay stressed constantly. So I genuinely believe that Song of Horror is a game that can't be missed if you're an indie horror fan or someone who wants to start loving this genre. Oh my god, Daniel! Help! Someone help us, please! The song is playing. Once you listen to it, nothing can save you. <gasps> it's my sincerest belief that we can go on living. <laughs> it really makes you think about what it means to be human. I mean... If we are able to save even just a small piece of ourselves, why wouldn't we do that? When I say Soma is probably one of the best indie horror games in the last 10 years, this is not an exaggeration by any means. This is one of those experiences where jump scares mean nothing compared to the powerful narrative and plot. In this game, you play as Simon Jarrett, a man who wakes up with no memories in an underwater research facility called Pathos 2. However, before all of this, Simon was a victim of a fatal car crash that killed his friend and caused huge damage to his brain. After he made it alive, he agreed to go through an experimental treatment involving a brain scan. And what happened next is something you won't expect. As I said earlier, 
The game starts when Simon wakes up with no memory in this weird research facility, and as he explores the place, he encounters strange creatures, malfunctioning robots, and bizarre messages from the facility's former inhabitants. It's all disturbing because Simon doesn't know what the heck he's doing here, or what's happening around him. The story explores profound themes of consciousness, identity, what it means to be human, and the nature of existence in a world increasingly reliant on technology. All these intriguing elements will eventually lead you to a plot twist that you never had in mind, and a conclusion that will keep you sad, shocked, and impressed by how deep the narrative is. I'm not going to explain anything else to avoid spoiling it for you, but for me, Soma is a game that comes once every decade. Catherine? Please don't leave me alone. Catherine? Catherine? You will find what you are searching for within the mountain. I really had a hard time choosing the last game for this list because I wanted to choose one that's worth it and also not insanely popular. And to be honest, I ended up choosing Bramble the Mountain King because it seems like the perfect addition to this video. This is a piece of art that looks beautiful, feels fun, and also allows us to not forget the horror side of it. In this incredible world, you control a young boy named Ole, who attempts to rescue his kidnapped sister Lillemore from mythological creepy creatures. He must traverse an environment that's related to fairy tales, but he also must encounter terrifying entities that are not peaceful at all. Every piece of this place feels like an enticing adventure that you want to live, no matter the story or where your curiosity will lead you. The survival elements here are also amazing because the young boy's struggle makes you more motivated to save him and help him grapple with these challenges. It's simply one of those games that you can't hate. <laughs> Lamus would always look after his only friend. Okay, this is it, my dear friends. These are 10 indie horror games that I personally believe anyone should play if they want to understand why this genre is awesome and why it deserves more attention. I'm pretty sure you noticed by now that I intentionally skipped a few insane games that deserve to be on this video. But as I said earlier, I wanted to talk about games that I hadn't spoken about much before. In a normal scenario, we all know that Visage should be included here, because, in my opinion, it's one of the scariest psychological horror games ever created in the last decade. And of course, Madison is also a game that can't be missed in this space, and deserves to be at the top of any list about indie horror. The One and Only from the Darkness is another game that has a special place in our minds, and made us actually realize that we can be scared by just being inside a calm house. All of these titles were talked about extensively on the channel before, and that's why I wanted to leave room for other ones. Tell me in the comments about your own choices and what indie games you think made you a fan of this genre. Anyway, until next time, give this video a like if you loved it, and I hope to see you soon. For one last photo. <laughs>